Guys, take a look. This is the house I am renovating. It is 114 square meters. The wall is broken and the steel bars are exposed. The steel bars are also rusty. If you reach out and wipe it, the wall will turn into powder and fall down. Look, this is the quality of the building. Hello everyone, this is the house in Building 8 Unit 1 of Fenghua Court in Rongdong Resettlement Area, Shang'an New Area. Due to drainage issues in the bathroom, I decided to remove the floor for repairs. To my surprise, I found that the walls and the door were all water damaged, and the wall covering at the bottom was also ruined. You can see that with just a little force, large chunks of the wall are falling down. It's all deteriorated. These walls crumble like soil. And as for the floor, this is a classic example of shoddy construction. It breaks apart in chunks with a single strike. You can see it peeling layer by layer. Can this still be used? It's all foam and debris. Video shows the Yueshan Garden community in Chengdu. The porch of this building may have collapsed due to construction quality or other problems. In addition to the onlookers, there were also a large number of police officers at the scene. Due to the official cover-up by the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, the true cause of the accident is unknown. These videos depict real-life recordings shared on a video platform by residents of China's resettlement units and workers involved in renovating these units. From the damaged walls, rusty steel bars, and crumbling main walls, it's evident that the quality of China's resettlement units is a cause for concern. Starting from the 1990s, China witnessed the construction of a large number of resettlement units. In China, resettlement units are built by the government to provide housing for residents who are relocated due to urban road construction and other public infrastructure projects. The primary beneficiaries of these resettlement units are urban residents and those displaced by demolition, including rural households whose homes were requisitioned. In simple terms, when the government needs to acquire units and land for development, it has an obligation to provide these displaced households with housing that meets certain quality standards and is equivalent in value to what they had before. However, based on the feedback from resettled residents, it appears that the quality of the units provided by the government falls short of expectations. Walls that crumble at the slightest touch, exposed pipes on the ground, uneven building structures, and ceilings that let in downpours have left residents repeatedly facing housing challenges. Some netizens have reported incidents such as wall cracks and sinking of the main structure of buildings in Zhejiang's Fuyang resettlement units caused by landfilling with garbage. The bursting of water pipes within the walls has resulted in flooding, rendering the buildings uninhabitable. Despite this, the electronic board at the entrance of the residential area ironically still displays a welcome home message. Residents living in poverty alleviation units in Hunan have also exposed significant quality and safety issues. There are quality problems in all 12 buildings within the neighborhood, causing them to live in fear. Look, this door is full of paper. Was this door blown down by the wind? Yes, it was blown down by the wind. When the wind blew over, it fell down. Have you seen the appraisal report? It hasn't been sent out, and I haven't seen it. Just say there is no appraisal report. Due to its severe impact, this incident has garnered attention from the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party and has been reported by multiple residents who have moved into poverty alleviation units in Xinhua County, Lodi City, Hunan. Since relocating to these units in 2019, residents have continuously encountered quality issues. These problems include wall cracks, cracks of varying sizes in the indoor ceilings and floors, missing steel bars and house beams, leaks in toilets, kitchens, and even bedrooms. Public information indicates that Mangang Town, Fu's family village, is one of the centralized relocation sites for poverty alleviation in Xinhua County, Hunan. Among numerous relocation sites, the facilities around the site are relatively well equipped, and it's less than a kilometer away from the town government. Many relocated households come here with hope, not expecting the quality of the resettlement units to be so distressing. One of the interviewed residents, Ms. Wong, mentioned that both her bedroom and living room floors had additional beams added. She stated that without these additions, the entire house would shake with a slight footstep. Other residents have also expressed that when walking inside the house, they can feel the entire floor shaking, a problem that should not exist in units meeting quality standards. Furthermore, mainland Chinese media outlets have reported that this resettlement housing project consists of 12 buildings accommodating 189 families, totaling 808 people from various villages in Mangong Town. 
The project was completed in December 2018, and residents moved in May 2019. However, the frequent occurrence of problems in these resettlement units within less than five years raises questions about the quality standards. According to investigation data, the construction was carried out by the Hunan Construction Group, a wholly state-owned enterprise with 100% government control. In other words, there was no private enterprise involvement in the project, and the entire construction was undertaken by the government and state-owned enterprises. Regarding the current situation of this resettlement site, a construction worker responsible for maintenance and reinforcement mentioned that all 12 buildings in this neighborhood need reinforcement, but so far, only two model units have been addressed. The condition of the remaining units is uncertain, and several residents have already moved away out of fear that the buildings might collapse. In reality, whether it's demolition and resettlement housing or poverty alleviation resettlement housing, they are fundamentally crucial for the government's livelihood construction, which plays a vital role in people's survival and development. The Chinese Communist Party, in its efforts to showcase the political achievements and claim victory in the poverty alleviation battle, has continuously constructed resettlement units, relocating impoverished individuals from rural areas to high-rise buildings. However, the quality of these buildings has exposed the true face of this poverty alleviation drama, confirming suspicions that China's poverty alleviation standards differ significantly from international standards. These shaky buildings have become a symbol of a political facade. Another instance of poor quality construction can be seen in the resettlement units located in Xiong'an New Area. Xiong'an New Area has been mentioned in previous episodes as one of Xi Jinping's millennial projects. It received an investment of 664 billion yuan and was transformed from former cornfields into a development comprising train stations, office buildings, residential communities, five-star hotels, schools, and hospitals. Authorities intended to develop Xiong'an New Area into an economic development city and make it a representative project of the regime's political career. However, due to low occupancy rates, it was mocked as China's largest ghost town. Today, due to poor quality, it has been labeled a shoddy construction project. Hello everyone. Today I want to show you the quality of the units in Feng Huating, Rongdong Resettlement Area, Shang'an New District. The walls are peeling off layer by layer. The house we lived in before was not like this. It was just the wall covering that fell off. If you look at this side, the wall covering here is falling off piece by piece. It can be removed with just one pull. I don't know what material was used. Property management didn't care and just let it fall piece by piece. This is Feng Hua Ting in the Rongdong resettlement area of Shang'an New District. The government built the house in a mess and stopped construction for several months. It hasn't been repaired yet. I wanted the general contractor to repair it for me, but he said it couldn't be dismantled. And the more it was dismantled, the more problems it would cause. I didn't believe it at first, but now it feels like it's true. After the wallpaper was peeled off, there was a hole in the wall. People always say that the sound insulation isn't good. How can a wall of this quality have such good sound insulation? The sound is transmitted directly next door. The Chinese Communist Party, CCP, once boasted about the extensive infrastructure in Xiong'an New Area, including the Jingxiong Expressway, Rongwu Expressway, and the largest Xiong'an high-speed rail station in all of Asia. They also touted world-class educational resources with more than a dozen high-quality schools, including Tsinghua University and Peking University, and over a dozen top-tier medical resources, including Peking Union Medical College Hospital. Several central state-owned enterprises were supposed to relocate there, creating numerous job opportunities. The area was even planned for technological development. However, before these grand goals could be achieved, issues with the living conditions in Xiong'an's resettlement units began to emerge. Reports from residents who have already moved in reveal shocking practices. Many residents have resorted to raising chickens inside their units and within the neighborhood. Some have even taken to planting vegetables in the green spaces within the neighborhood. While the CCP authorities use shoddy construction to boast of a victory in poverty alleviation, the quality of life for residents seems to be heading in the opposite direction. These urban villages within the apartment buildings may face an even bleaker future. In the Dongjing North Village resettlement housing neighborhood located in Shijiazhuang, problems with construction quality have also been exposed. 
The video shows exposed plastic water pipes on the far right, damaged walls with exposed inner cores, and multiple hollow areas near the base of the walls, along with uneven ground. Each of these issues challenges building safety, yet these low-quality units are still being allocated to displaced households. Similar problems with construction quality have been reported in other regions as well. In this video, ceilings of units crumble into powder upon impact. One can't help but wonder, and ask Chinese government officials, would you dare to live in these buildings if they were your own? Faced with homes that pose a risk to their lives, the only choice for residents is to move out. A resident of the resettlement housing in Lodi, Hunan, Mr. Liu, has chosen to return to his hometown and stay with relatives. He says, I moved out more than 10 days ago because I can't live there anymore. This building had additional beams added a couple of years ago, but even those reinforcements have broken. When you walk on the floors, they start to loosen, and there are leaks everywhere. After the beams broke, I found that there were no steel bars inside. It's too dangerous to live there. The majority of residents also expressed their intention to move out and not continue living in these units. Finally, one by one, the resettlement units are gradually becoming ghost buildings. Associate Professor Wu Muluen from the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy at the National University of Singapore points out that the situation is similar to the sparsely populated condition of Xiong An New area. People are voting with their feet based on their own interests. He says, this resistance is based on real interests. If you cannot align their interest with yours, then of course you cannot achieve it. For the residents of resettlement housing, the most crucial question is why the quality of these units is so poor, and how can they move into decent buildings? Experts within the mainland Chinese industry believe that fundamentally, resettlement housing is a government livelihood project, and projects from construction are strictly controlled. Therefore, construction companies often resort to subpar materials and construction methods to increase their profits, resulting in lower quality resettlement housing compared to commercial housing. Additionally, the government may not adequately consider the needs and comfort of the residents in terms of planning, design, area, layout, and facilities, which cannot meet the residents' requirements for comfortable living. In summary, if you don't spend money, don't expect to live in a good house. Public opinion suggests that the low profit margins in the construction of resettlement housing may be linked to a phenomenon akin to Chinese-style bribery, which is prevalent in various government construction projects. This involves various stages of bribery to government officials both before and after the construction project, ultimately securing the project. The substantial sums spent on bribery reduce already meager profits, leaving construction companies with no choice but to cut expenses in materials and labor costs, resulting in the construction of inhabitable resettlement housing. If government officials are involved in low-quality resettlement housing construction due to corruption, seeking justice through legal means and safeguarding the interests of residents could indeed be extremely challenging. Furthermore, due to an oversupply in the real estate sector, the Chinese government is looking for ways to utilize displaced households to absorb excess real estate inventory. According to reports from mainland Chinese media, on January 4th, Guangzhou approved the implementation plan for housing vouchers and initiated a pilot program for housing vouchers in the Shu Tong Old City Reconstruction Project in Li Wan District on January 5th. Li Yujia, the chief researcher at the Guangdong Provincial Housing Policy Research Center, explained that Li Wan was chosen because it had a large land supply in recent years, ranking second in Guangzhou's land supply in 2023. The area had a large supply of new units and a high inventory, so implementing housing vouchers would help revitalize the real estate market in that district. Taiwanese financial expert Huang Shizong points out that in such cases, the most unfortunate individuals are the displaced households because they have limited choices within the Chinese Communist Party system. He believes that aside from government livelihood projects, most of the units these displaced households receive are properties that cannot be sold in the real estate market. These units may be in undesirable locations, have poor conditions, or are even of poor quality. Yet these residents are forced to take on these properties to help real estate developers clear their unsellable inventory. Originally, the government demolished their units and wanted to develop their land. In principle, they should have been provided with housing of equivalent quality and value. Instead, they are used to absorb subpar housing inventory, causing concern about the rights of Chinese citizens. 
Mainland Chinese criticized the situation, saying, "Helping developers clear housing inventory benefits the government and developers, but none of it benefits these ordinary citizens. They vacated their own units and land, left behind the environment they lived in for decades, and now have to go to another place to help developers solve their housing inventory problem. It's a win-win for the government and the party." However, Chinese American economist Li Hengqing believes that this move by the Chinese government cannot solve the problem of oversupply. He cites the example of urban village redevelopment, where the government raises units and must rebuild them because not doing so would mean they can't recoup their investment. The government can spend money to address this issue, such as turning the flattened land into parks or green spaces, but it's unlikely because the government itself lacks funds at the moment. Li Hengqing says, "Now that the real estate market has completely cooled down, the government can't generate revenue from land anymore. So the CCP government is preparing to spend trillions on urban village redevelopment, helping the real estate market clear its inventory, and resolving issues related to demolition and resettlement in this way. But in reality, it cannot solve the problem because the land obtained through demolition needs more units to be built to recover the costs. In essence, it's a supply-demand issue." Li Hongqing believes that the fundamental problem the government needs to address is that the number of units in China keeps increasing while the population is gradually decreasing. Therefore, the ultimate solution is to reduce housing prices and improve housing quality, thereby increasing people's demand for units and improving the supply-demand relationship in the real estate market.